Mm-hmm. All right, excellent. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the second live stream of the day. Today, we are going to talk about training volume and how I increase it, right? So it's my perspective on the topic. I think you're going to learn some rather interesting information. So thank you for everybody who's here. I can see all your names. Much love to all of you. And after this, it's going to be the McGregor fight with uh, Mayweather. Like, shit, it's going to be really nice to see. So there's a second video. After that, I'm chilling. So let's talk about this. How to increase training volume the Alpha Destiny way. Okay. First thing you have to realize is that I use concurrent periodization in my training. This means, folks, I have a volume day and an intensity day. And in particular, these days are done on the yearly cycle. That means I'm maxing out every single week and I'm doing volume work every single week. So in other words, volume and intensity is maintained, right? Now, how can I get away with this without this affecting my recovery? It's simple. I rotate the special exercises, and this overrides the biological law of accommodation. So now that we have the basics out of the way, let's talk about how to increase volume. Okay? So the first thing is that because I'm not cycling through percentages relative to my 1 or max, I can afford to increase volume whenever I want without consequence. You see, if you were to run a linear periodization style, you would begin with high volume, and then as you go through the weeks, you'd eventually reach a point where you're doing high intensity, low volume. But with concurrent, given the fact that I'm doing high intensity and high volume every single week, year-round, that means I can also increase the volume year-round. And the first thing I'd like to state about that is that volume will automatically raise whether I'm doing nothing or not, okay? Because as you become stronger and more advanced, Total workload is going to increase, okay? Uh, to maintain a bench press for f a 500-pound uh, presser, for example, uh, you need to do a lot more volume than if you're a 300-pound bencher, right? And even if you do the same sets and reps, the total workload is automatically going to be higher. So whether or not I'm actively trying to increase volume, it inevitably goes up anyway, like regardless of what I'm trying to do here. Like what I'm trying to say is that you don't actively have to Increase it if you don't want to. It's naturally going to increase as a result of getting stronger if you're following an advanced training system. So that's probably the primary way by which my volume just increases. Because I, I, most of the time, I'm doing the same sets and reps. Like, I, I have my rotations there. I like four sets of 12, uh, six sets of six, eight sets of eight, 10 sets of 10, uh, four sets of 25, three sets of 33. I do stuff like that, right? Uh, but it's maintained throughout the yearly cycle. So... I'm getting stronger within these set and rep ranges. And as a result, my workload is also increasing. So the only objective, the only objective I really have is trying to prevent myself from overreaching. If I can manage recovery with the correct concurrent setup, volume day intensity with the crossover of 72 hours, and I rotate between the set and reps, like one week, four sets of 25, the other week, three sets of 33, and I do shit like that, volume automatically goes up. Okay, so that's the first method by which I increase it. It just naturally goes up as a result of using the concurrent system, okay? Any questions about that before I move on to the second reason? Okay, you guys seem to be content with this, perfect. Uh, do you think volume training is a great way for resting the CNS? Um, it, it could be, but it, could, like, it depends how hard you go. You know, in some cases, volume training can be so intense that you actually burn out, you know, so it uh, depends on the training system. Okay, you guys seem to understand this, so let's uh, keep talking about it. The second way I increase volume, very simple, is by having balls, mental balls, right? You got to like, you, you, well, not mental, mental and physical. What you have to do is take your hand, grab your fucking nuts. I'm serious. Because sometimes, guys, um, the, the performance is there, but they just don't want to put in the work. They want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Three sets of 10. Three sets of 10 year-round. Really? Why is that the only thing that people talk about? Oh, you got to do three sets of 8 to 12 reps. No, you don't. You can do five sets of 10. You can do six sets of 10. You can do 10 sets of 10. There's many ways of training. And it doesn't have to be three sets of 8 to 12 reps. Who said that that's the rule? Why can't you do higher volume than that? Like five sets. 
So it starts by grabbing your nuts and stop doing the same conventional garbage that everybody else is doing. Instead of doing three sets of eight to 12 reps, why don't you try uh, five sets of 10 or just six sets of 10 just for the hell of it. Why don't you double the volume like that? Why not? And if you don't want to go that route, well, why don't you experiment with different set and rep ranges? Instead of doing uh, three by 10, why don't you try uh, four sets of 25? Why don't you do a three by 20? Why don't you shock your body a little bit with some balls? Like take your hand, grab your nuts and do something crazy. Why don't you try the super squat method where you're squatting very high frequently, like very high frequency, but you're doing reps of 20. Ever tried that? Doing a set of 12 and then you're grinding out those last eight reps with brutal effort and intensity. That's another way of raising your volume. It's just, it, it comes down to mental balls. And that's typically what I do in my training, guys. Uh, when I have to raise a certain lift, right, as, as quickly as possible, I just up the volume. But I don't up it a little bit. I don't go from three sets to four sets. I go crazy. You see, I'm a guy who, uh, he put me in a sports car, right? And I'm going to keep going until that fucking sports car runs out of gas or I'm going to crash into a building. That's the type of guy I am, right? So I'm not going to go gradual. I'm going to go from three sets to ten sets in one day. And yes, it's going to kill me. I'm going to be very, very, very exhausted from that workout. I'll probably throw up. I'll probably feel destroyed. And I'm probably going to go to bed the moment I get home. But I developed my mental balls. Because now I've increased the volume just by, just by attempting it. Sometimes it's all you need. Sometimes you just have to give yourself a kick in the ass and say, okay, I'm going to blast this fucking volume. I'm going to do such crazy volume that's going to blow your mind. And eventually, you're going to adapt to it. Just like you did when you first started uh, doing 5x5 five five squats. Ever tried 5x5? Five five? First two weeks, it was hell, wasn't it? You went in, your knees were sore, your quads were sore, your back, <laughs> your glutes, your hamstrings. Everything was feeling uh, not up to par. But you adapted to it. So that's a method right there. Just increase it. Just shut up and do it. Grab your nuts and do it. That's probably my favorite method of increasing volume. That's what I did. That's what I've been doing recently, actually, for raising my bench. I've just been increasing it tremendously. I added more. Actually, I'm going to move on to the next point, okay? Increasing the exercises, right? It doesn't just have to be the sets and reps necessarily, but it could also be uh, how many movements you're doing in a session. So if you're used to doing uh, two presses in a workout, well, you can increase it to uh, three uh, presses per workout, right? And that will automatically raise your volume considerably, especially if you're doing lots of sets and reps. So just little tweaks like that. Or instead of like um, dishing out on the accessory work, you can go ham on your accessory work. In fact, you can make the accessories more voluminous than the compounds themselves. I believe that's what uh, Louis Simmons promotes at the Westside Barbell Club. What he does is... He gets the minimal amount of volume needed for the heavy compounds, but then he gets the rest of it with the, the special exercises. Like for the posterior chain, you'll do 40,000 pounds of work of reverse hypers, which is a lot of reverse hypers, trust me. Trust me on that one. So it could just be as simple as that, making your accessories more difficult, Re leaving the compounds rather similar, but you just blast the accessories to hell. That's a great way of increasing volume, for real. And I do this all the time. Instead of doing uh, like a 5x5 five five deadlift, for example, I'll do uh, five sets of 50 on a reverse hyper. I'll work the same muscles of the deadlift, but without exposing myself to injury, you know, without having to harm my lower back or use terrible form or any of that stuff. So sometimes, instead of just raising the volume on the compounds, uh, we need to raise the volume on the accessory list, something that, a guy, that many people overlook, okay? All right, are we good so far? Shave that beard, man. Doesn't look good. I was thinking of going a stubble, or I keep working on my Viking beard. I don't know. We're gonna see. Anyway, I don't care. It's my beard. Yo, guys, this is not a Q and A, by the way. Okay, it's a discussion about volume work. All right. And then a uh, final, a well, final way of increasing your your volume. I'll give you a few more. Okay. Uh, a lot of guys run programs that utilize uh, ramping sets. Okay, which I do that all the time. It's basically where you work up to a one peak set, right? Well, instead of doing ramping sets, you can switch over to a back off sets. So now you're kind of doing it reverse. You're starting off with a weight that is rather heavy, and then you're gradually reducing every single set. You know, that, that's a great way of increasing your volume. Uh, another method is by going from back off sets or ramping sets to straight sets. 
A lot of guys don't do straight sets anymore because it's too hard. It's much easier to pick up the one peak set than to do like uh, five sets of the same weight. It's not, first of all, it's mentally draining to do that many sets with the same weight. And it's like, it's hard too. It's very hard. So sometimes guys just want to do one peak set and get the hell out of the gym. They want to make it short but intense. Well, sometimes you need that push. Sometimes you have to increase your volume so much that you're doing a lot of straight sets. And you'll find that oftentimes that's what you're missing. You're missing straight sets in your program. And I know uh, like guys like George Lehman, not really the biggest fan of straight sets. He does a lot of ramping, you know, and so do I. I do a lot of ramping, but that still doesn't mean that you should drop uh, straight sets completely. I think you should utilize straight sets. And uh, you should also combine like some of the bodybuilding techniques that guys are using, like fucking uh, drop sets. You know, drop sets, yeah, you lose performance, but you, you gain, you know, you, you gain a lot of uh, workload out of it and you get more out of less weight. Same thing for rest pause. Rest pause will allow you to keep pushing yourself to a new level. See, guys aren't using special techniques. They're just three sets of 8 to 12. The same shit all the fucking time. Why don't we mix it up? Why don't we increase the sets, the reps, the exercise selection? Why don't we do all these things and get better, right? Volume is the most important thing you have as a drug-free lifter. You know, I, I would say it's probably more important than the intensity portion, you know, because you have a lot of bodybuilders, for instance, who don't do uh, low percentages, but they're still very strong. I know a lot of powerlifters uh, thrive on higher repetitions. So it doesn't just have to be singles and triples to get stronger. Uh, volume work will get you stronger. Volume work will raise uh, your total workload, and it's going to make a massive difference. So you have to experiment with different techniques of raising your volume and stop being so close-minded that everything you got to do is three sets of uh, 8 to 12 reps. Expand your mind and feel free to do things that are crazy. In fact, if you're natural, you can handle more volume than you ever thought possible. See, a lot of guys, they believe that if you're drug-free, you have to do low volume, right? Well, here's why they're wrong. Given the fact that using uh, lighter weights, your total workload is less. You understand? If your total workload is less, that means it's easier to recover from. Again, George Lehman talked about this a very long time ago. Naturals can handle more volume than they could think. They can handle a lot of volume. The only naturals who really have to worry are those that are very, very advanced and they're doing superhuman weights. Like if you're a natty 750-pound puller, which those, those genetic leads do exist, trust me, um, you know, it's going to be harder to recover. But if you're just a regular natural, regular advanced guy, then you can handle a lot more volume than you think. So again, it goes back to giving yourself a kick in the fucking ass and doing it. Don't be afraid of high-volume programs. Don't think that high-volume programs are only for drug users. Oftentimes, that's what we fucking need. We need the volume. That's how I've been raising my strength recently, man. Because I'm Mr. I'm Mr. High Intensity. I'm, I'm Mr. Mr. Singles, all this stuff, right? Sorry about the camera. Yeah, I'm Mr. Singles. I'm Mr. All that stuff. But it's only when I started increasing my volume that my strength uh, started progressing at a rapid rate. You know, this will go for every single one of you. Just raise your goddamn volume. And if you're not going to raise your volume by increasing sets and reps and exercises, then uh, how about you increase your training frequency? Ever thought about that? So it doesn't have to be necessarily in uh, one question. Uh, not one question. Sorry, I'm reading here. It doesn't have to be one session. It could be multiple sessions. For example, when you do Bulgarian light, you're not really doing uh, high sets, high reps. But because you're in the gym every day with weights that are you know, very, very heavy, the total workload adds up throughout the week. So you can end up with similar workload to a guy who's doing a volume training system. So again, what we have to consider here is uh, total workload. That is obviously the most important thing. We need to figure out ways of increasing volume while remaining injury-free in the process. And that comes with the accessory work, not just constantly doing it on your main compounds. And then we have to grab our nuts and just do it. Just fucking do it and stop making excuses. Stop saying, oh, if you're natty, you can't do volume work. Bullshit. If you're natural, you will benefit greatly from volume work and your strength performance will increase tremendously, probably even more than the singles and the triples because ultimately, volume is the most important thing you have and increasing your total workload and your work capacity and all these factors is going to make or break you, all right? So, I think that's really all I want to talk about uh, regarding volume training. I think I shared um, a few different um, perspectives regarding this. I hope you learned something. And uh, with that said, let's have a, a little bit of a, of a chat. Right, give me your questions about volume work and I'll do my best to answer them, all right? Okay. Get big without lifting heavy, only volume work? Sure. Absolutely. You, you don't have to do super heavy lifting like, um, 
lifting above 90% if you, like, you don't want, like, sorry, I'm stumbling. It's not necessary. I personally do it because I believe that you will get the biggest when your strength performance increases in a dramatic way. So I'm, I thrive on singles and triples, but uh, you can get just as big without doing that type of stuff. You can get big on fives, you know, as long as your percentage is somewhat high. I want to say like above 75, you know, uh, in terms of low reps, then you're going to be fine. You don't have to do max effort method if you don't want to. That's what I like, but it's not required. I know Matt Wenning does not, uh, I don't think he does max effort method, even though he's a conjugate athlete. Um, he goes 85, 90%-ish. So he's not going full out. Uh, Louis Simmons, on the other hand, would say go 100%. And I tend to follow the word of Louis more so, but uh, yeah, you don't have to do singles and triples if you don't want to, but yeah, you'll, you'll get big from volume training as long as you're increasing your performance in the long run, okay? Progressive overload is the name of the game. Okay, what do you think of one month of German volume training and one month of high intensity? Okay, that's kind of like a block periodization setup. And I'm not a fan of it. Not at all. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get really good at volume training in month one. And then in month two, you're going to become shit at volume work. You're only going to get good at your lower reps. And then when you peak, you know, and you, go, and you start restarting that cycle, you're not going to be good at volume work anymore. So that's one of the things I'm against. For me personally, I'm not, I'm not pro linear periodization, right? This is something we have to establish on this channel. I, I just, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, if you want to do it, you can be my guest. If you want to do the block stuff, be my guest. But it's not something that I personally believe in and it's not something that I really promote. Um, I know how to structure these types of programs and I will give you advice regarding how to do it. But I'm not a fan of that type of setup where you, where you have different blocks. I know some athletes have benefited greatly from that. Uh, guys that are much stronger than myself, but for me, I, I just, I don't roll with that type of shit, right? I prefer a DUP or a concurrent or Bulgarian. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm pro Louis Simmons, man. I'm really, uh, that's how I am, just saying. Uh, should you do volume work on overhead press? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, that's probably one of the best ways of raising overhead press. High reps work tremendously. A lot of strongman competitors don't even do low reps on strict presses. They'll do uh, like a push press, low reps, and then for their volume work, they'll do strict press, reps at 20. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, volume work in regards to overhead pressing. And that's how I got my 225. I did a 10 sets of 10 cycle, uh, three week, and then it built, built me up, it peaked me. Uh, why are my hands so yellow? Not really a question regarding volume work, but that has to do with beta carotene. See, first of all, these are calluses. See the calluses? Check. That's a callus. These are calluses. That's also calluses. And then this is my, it's callus at the bottom. So what you're seeing is calluses and, and beta carotene most likely. But my hands aren't actually yellow. It's just the calluses are yellowish. You know what I'm saying? And for those saying disgusting, I don't really give a fuck. Uh, these hands help me lift better. You know, I don't, I don't want to have pretty boy hands. Sorry. You did a cycle. It's on record. Alpha Destiny's Natty. Okay. I don't know what you're trying to say there, but... We're talking about training cycles here, not um, roid cycles, just saying. So th these are the basics of uh, periodization if you read any exercise science book. So when I say I did a three-week um, volume cycle, that means I did three weeks of specialization on volume, typically with a pendulum wave included in there, all right? You guys got to discern the difference between the two, unless you're just trolling me. Okay. Uh, you can't go heavy on tens of the tens, so how are you supposed to go? Uh, you can go... Um, well, you can go moderate. You can go pretty good. You can go pretty good, man. Trust me. You, you just you got to get some balls and, and try it out. If you, if you over press uh, 225, you can probably do 10 sets of 10 with uh, anywhere between 115 and uh, 135. I bet you could do it. My friend did t uh, 10 sets of 10 yesterday with 115. Very doable. You just got to give yourself a kick in the ass and do it. Okay. Uh, thoughts about high volume deadlifts? Okay, I'm not really a fan of it because uh, typically speaking, higher rep deadlifts tend to lead to injury. That's really where most of the problems come from. It's not doing one rep maxes, it's the high rep deadlifts because as you do your higher reps, fatigue starts to occur and that leads to a form breakdown. And when you have form breakdown on your deadlifts, particularly a lower back rounding, there's a lot of uh, shearing forces, okay, especially 
The nature of the deadlift is more posture chain oriented. So that's where a lot of the injuries come from. It comes from higher rep deadlifts, not the one rep maxes. Certainly the one rep max could be a problem if you're using terrible form to get the weight up. But uh, most of the problems, I would say, comes from the higher reps and the higher volume. Like if you're doing a 5x5 deadlift with 500 pounds, I would say you're at a very high risk of hurting your lower back uh, compared to doing a 500 pound rack pull. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not really a fan of it, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'd rather you do speed pulls. This way the, 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 the workload is still high, but you're not doing high uh, reps. So try something like 10 sets of two on a deadlift. You'll get 20 total reps. Right, which is pretty good if you ask me. You can even do 10 sets of three if you want, but you're not gonna put yourself in the higher rep uh, injury risk, right? That's just my take on it. I know guys like Richard Hawthorne thrive on 10 sets of 10 deadlift, and it works. It definitely, it's an effective method. I'm not gonna lie here. Volume deadlifts work. I'm just saying that they have an injury risk that I don't think is worth it. So I'd rather not promote it on this channel. Just saying. It, it, so it works, but because of the injury risk, I would just avoid it completely. That's just my take on it. Okay. Uh, what's your take on rest periods for volume training? Uh, I personally believe you should use uh, lower rest intervals. If you're doing volume work, you don't have to be resting uh, like a power lifter, like five to eight minutes between the set. You don't require that. Um, it can be as low as 15 to 30 seconds. It could be 60 to 90 seconds. It could be as high as two minutes. Uh, personally, I would not really go above two minutes if you're doing volume work simply because it's more efficient and you don't need to rest that much in the first place, and also uh, your workouts will be much uh, quicker. So yeah. Okay, is it possible to override the biological law of accommodation with only volume training? Absolutely, sure. Yeah, what you'd have to do is uh, change a set, and re like have two different, like, depends on the program, right? If you're doing a full body twice a week, one should be like really, really, really high volume, and the other one should be a little bit less volume, but a tiny bit heavier. This way you're still kind of crisscrossing the volume and intensity, right? And also the sets and reps should vary on both days as well as the exercise selection. Just be sure to rotate the lifts. If you rotate the lifts, right, and you have different set and rep ranges for both days, you will absolutely override the biological law of accommodation. Now, you might not maximize your, like your, um, your high intensity strength because you're not training the singles and the triples and stuff like that, but you will still get very strong, very big. I have no reason to believe why you would suffer from doing that. It's perfectly fine. Like for me, I love lifting heavy. I, I just, I love it. I fucking love it. So I do it, you know? But you don't, you don't require it. <sighs> okay. Guys, I'm only answering questions about volume, all right? <laughs> I'm not answering questions about masturbation and uh, all this other stuff, okay? Can I use the program on out alpha six days a week you're talking about my novice program hell no do not run the novice program six days a week never never ever ever please okay uh high volume training on calisthenics the failure can build muscle even on very high reps yes that's pretty much a prison workout that's what they do it's extremely uh, simple moves but very 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 high volume and the result is that you get big muscles doing it don't believe me Try uh, doing um, 500 to 1,000 push-ups in a workout. Try it. Break it up. I'm not saying doing it in one set. I'm saying break it up into like five sets of 50 of one style, five sets of 50 another style. Ramp up to 500 total reps. And by the end of that workout, your, your chest should be the failure. Your arms, your chest, shoulders should be the failure. Do that for long enough, you're going to get bigger. Um, so yeah, you can do it. It's, it's, just, it's prisoner style. That's how they do it. It's just fucking high volume, high reps but you go to failure. Okay. Uh, what do you do for recovery the next day? How do you recover from a volume workout? Good, set. Uh, good question. Uh, I personally use bands. Uh, I have some bands here, but I'm not gonna... Mm, do I have them? One second, guys. I'm gonna show you my bands. Okay, I use the Monster Mini Bands, as you can see, okay? Motherfucker. Hold on, this fucking thing here. Sorry about that. I almost stopped the stream by accident. Uh, yeah, where is it? Okay. I use these Mini Bands, okay? I'll do band curls 
So I'll stand inside of it, you know, and I'll do many repetitions of curls. You know, you can put it over your head and do extensions. You can put it behind your back and do uh, like bandits locations, I'll show you. You know, go here, you know, boom. Do band pull aparts. You just use, use bands on your off days, right? And uh, incorporate GPP work as well. Uh, the GPP will raise your work capacity and it's gonna flush you out. Like you're gonna feel a lot better and you're not going to, uh, you'll see you'll feel much more recovered if you do that. And you can also consider doing things like low intensity cardio, steady state. But I, I'm always doing a form of active recovery, right? I don't just sit around in my chair like, <sighs> you know, like fucking doing nothing all day. No, I'll, I'll use some bands. I'll do higher reps. Some guys call it feeder workouts. I call it connective tissue training. But you do that after your volume workout and you eat a lot of food and you'll recover much better this way, okay? Yeah, for those of you asking, it's GPP, not G4P, right? That would be gay for pain. No, this is um, general physical preparedness. It refers to uh, conditioning work that is general, not sport specific, okay? An example would be something like the, uh, the sled pull. Okay, how many sets and reps per week for hypertrophy? Um, that doesn't really matter. What matters is the total uh, workload, okay? And for, for what your strength is right now, that's going to vary for every single person. For example, I said before that the 300 pound bencher will not have the same volume as a 500 pound bencher. And that's kind of what separates their strength. So it's not about the sets and the reps, it's about the total workload and you can acquire that through whatever means you prefer. Some guys get it with very, very high frequency, uh, high intensity. Others do it with uh, less frequency, but very, very high volume. So it doesn't really matter how you get it, but try to get that workload in there. You want, uh, you want to constantly increase it over time and that's ultimately gonna give you bigger muscles. You know, it doesn't have to be a three sets of eight to 12. It could be a five by five, a five sets of 10. It's workload that will get you jacked not a magical uh, set and rep range, all right? Okay. Good questions on the volume, guys. The volume for neck training is good? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing that I do. You know, I, I, I like high reps, like very, very high reps. Four sets of 25, three sets of 100, stuff like that. I, uh, I don't really do low reps on neck training. I don't even do reps of 10, to be honest with you. I just do very, very high volume. Like I'll rep it out like fucking crazy. You know, I think that's the best way of building the neck. And that's how uh, Mike Machine Bruce did it as well. How many reps for wrist curls? I like higher reps. You could try uh, four sets of 25. I know Raymond Cody does like five sets of 50, which is crazy. I don't even know how he does that. But I like uh, three sets of 20, four sets of 25. Will volume weaken the tendons and ligaments? Uh, no. However, if you attempt to do uh, very, very high percentages, then I would say you're at a greater risk than if you were to include lower reps. Like the best way of strengthening the tendons and ligaments is by going stupid heavy. There's just there's no better way. In particular, um, doing heavy overloading lifts seems to work the best for that. Uh, for example, doing the rack pull above the knee will thicken the tendons and ligaments. You know, it'll build total body structural integrity and stuff like that. Therefore, we're reducing your injury risk. You know, so there's a lot of uh, compounds like that that will make you injury free and uh, it, it, it makes your tendons and ligaments stronger. But what I'm trying to say is that if you just do volume work and then you attempt to do um, like high percentages, there's probably a greater risk of hurting yourself because you never actually did that. That's why in the powerlifting programs, there's a peaking process, right? Or if you're not doing a powerlifting program, there's going to be like an all periodization, there's volume and intensity, right? And that's also, that's also why some bodybuilders, they end up tearing the pecs because they don't have strong tendons and ligaments. Especially if you couple that with uh, roid use, right? If you're on roids, typically speaking, what I've observed is that uh, they get very big muscles but weaker uh, tendons and ligaments because it's not, like, the muscle develops at a faster rate and then uh, they end up tearing their bicep or their chest or something like that. Did you take tests to grow a beard? No, I took a minoxidil 5% topical solution. Try it out, it works. Is volume from compounds enough for arm growth? Based off my experience, no. Uh, my arms are my worst body part. Like there's nothing in my physique that looks as bad as my arms, okay? I'm uh, five foot six and a half in height, right, barefoot. And my arms are 16 and a half inches flexed cold, right? It's my worst body part. 
And uh, a long, a long time ago, I used to rely on that bullshit, just doing, doing the close grip bench and focusing on, on volume on these lifts. And my arm is never really good that much, right? They're, to, th to this day, they're my worst body part. I find that if I do a lot of isolation work, especially in the form of extensions and, and long head activation exercises, like overhead work, overhead extension, that's when my arms get bigger, you know? It's never been enough for me to, to just do the compounds. So I find the only guys who get that are those with like a, a bit of above average genetics, you know? I've seen dudes that they're not even benching two plates, they have 18s, which I'm fucking envious of that, but uh, most guys will benefit from higher volume, all right? They will absolutely benefit from higher reps, higher sets, and doing isolation work for the arms. You have to do some curls, in my honest opinion, if you wanna get maximum development. You gotta do the, the push downs, the extensions. I'm a big believer in direct arm work and high volume uh, for building your arms. I think if you just do low volume or if you just do the compounds, you are not maximizing your arm development. And we've all seen those power lifters that could bench a lot of weight, but they got sticks for arms. And although I'm not a power lifter, I would say I'm in that category. My arms, to this day, are my worst body part. And that's because I train them in the way that I was describing, which is wrong, in my opinion. I think you have to be more of a bodybuilder when training your arms, you know? Just my thoughts. Thoughts on people that tell guys just do deadlifts and shrugs to grow the neck? Yeah, man, you can check out my yoke playlist. I've talked enough about that, but it, I, don't, I don't believe in that. Put it like that. If you, you, the only people who benefit from that are guys who are very elite in genetics, uh, but the average population, there's much more feasible ways of growing uh, your, your neck and your traps and all that stuff. Uh, just check out my yoke playlist. I talk a lot about that. How do you avoid vomiting on volume work? Okay, this is a great question. Um, actually, I did vomit one time. It was during a session that I, pu that I showed you, I actually filmed it. And actually, I filmed myself vomiting, I'm not gonna lie. And I filmed the, uh, the, the garbage bag as well. I just, I never posted it because uh, I'm probably gonna get banned if I do that. But I did film it. It was not pretty. Essentially, uh, you have to refrain from high acidic foods before eating, and you have to eat uh, several hours before, right? Do not eat an hour before doing a volume workout, you're probably gonna throw up. So based off my experience, I found that if you do it a few hours before, you're, you're pretty good, you know? I would say a minimum two, three hours, you're not gonna have problems. But yeah, um, could happen, could happen, guys. Mm -mm. Okay, what about abs? Some say frequency plus high reps, some say no direct ab work, some say low rep, weighted. I say do both, definitely do both. I, uh, like what I do is I get my lower reps, high intensity, uh, with heavy compounds. For example, I'll do a Zerker uh, rack pull or Zerker holds where you just you pick it up with a very, very heavy weight, like six, 600 pounds, and you just hold it. And that'll work your core in an isometric fashion, uh, but using heavy weights. And then for the accessory work, I'll take a, like a cable, I'll do standing cable crunches, but I'll do four sets of 25, you get it? So you can kind of mix it like that. I personally say do the high intensity with the heavy compounds, and then for the higher reps, you can do it with the... Uh, like the isolation work, you know, like with the spinal flexion uh, exercises. Just my take on it. Do you think BCAAs help for beer growth? I don't really think so, man. Um, how many reps per week per muscle group? Yeah, again, I talked about that before. It doesn't really matter. It's total workload. If you want, uh, yeah, it's total workload, dude. It's not just about the reps. Uh, okay. You got more questions about volume work? Guys, I want to answer everything possible, okay? I'm only answering questions about volume. I'm not going to answer questions about uh, this other stuff here, like Olympic weightlifting. Okay, what's this one? No. Mm -hmm. Does volume work aid in imbalances? Yes, absolutely. I believe it will increase the nuclei in your muscle cells, which makes them easier to build. And I also believe that pumping your muscles is important. I don't think you should just focus on the lower reps, you know, and also the volume work will raise your, your work capacity and uh, yeah, it'll correct the lagging areas for sure. I, I say do both, do volume and intensity, but yes, you, you're, the volume work is gonna make a massive difference for any lagging body part. Uh, thoughts on touch and go deadlifts for volume? Okay, well, first of all, I talked about high volume deadlifts before and that I'm not really in favor of them uh, because it tends to uh, lead to form breakdown. 
And if, especially if you do touch and go, that's probably even a, a greater chance, you know, where you're going to really be bouncing and you might hurt yourself. So I would go against it. Instead, consider the Romanian deadlift because uh, it's kind of, it's not touch and go there, but you're using the stretch reflex in your hamstrings and you could just do higher reps like that. So that's my solution for you. Don't do touch and go deads. Do uh, Romanian deadlifts. Problem solved. Uh, what muscle groups respond well to high volume? I don't know, bro. That kind of uh, depends on you and your individual weaknesses. I think that pretty much every muscle responds well to high volume. For the most part, yeah. But I would say the neck is probably the most uh, beneficial for that. The neck really sp responds well to high volume. Mm -hmm. Good questions, guys. Uh, thoughts on high volume, 531 for powerlifting? Well, look, the 531 system is very specific, and you should run it as written. And uh, if you're going to be modifying it, well, I recommend that you acquire a vast understanding of exercise science and programming. This way, you can implement volume work in a practical way. But I would just run it as, uh, as written, to be honest with you. How much volume is too much volume? Do you think this type of thing should be auto-regulated? Yeah, um, basically, it's too much volume if you're suffering, like, recovery-wise. So, yeah, it should be auto-regulated. Yeah, it should. But that also depends on your program. You know, if you're doing concurrent, it, there's a lot more auto-regulation involved because you kind of got to listen to your own body and listen to your intuition. So, I would just, I would base it off recovery. If your ability to recover is hindered as a result of doing volume work, then you're probably doing a bit too much. So you have to uh, listen to your body ultimately. I think that's the most uh, beneficial thing here. Uh, volume or intensity for cutting. Uh, I, I do both. Like I, I train the exact same way that I do when I'm bulking or cutting. You know, uh, What's going to happen is the volume will decrease uh, slightly. So if you're doing a 10 by 10, you're probably going to have to resort to a 5 by 10 or 3 by 10. It will simply be too much if you tried going all the way balls to the wall, but you know, it comes down to recovery. Uh, German volume training, yeah, big fan of that. 10 by 10 is awesome. That's how I peaked for my 225 overhead press. And I, and I do it all the time. I did it for my bench press. I did a 10 by 10 with 225. You know, I do a lot of 10 by 10. I, I, I like to do a lot of uh, 10 by 10, 8 by 8, 6 by 6, 3 by 3, and then singles. It's a nice little uh, rotation that you could do. That's a secret I gave you right there. Treasure it. Which volume scheme would you recommend? 10 sets of 3 or t uh, 3 by 10? Hey, man, you're asking some great fucking questions, for real. I, li I, like what you're <laughs> I like these questions. Okay. Depends on the exercise. Okay. If you're doing a deadlift, I would do 10 sets of 3 uh, because there's less of an injury risk, if you ask me. Uh, be, you know, and you're going to gain a similar amount of size. I don't, it's, it's all about workload, right? So 10 by 3, 3 by 10 is the same workload. If using a similar percentage relative to 100 max, the difference lies in the exercise that you're using. You know, also, there's also feasibility to consider, as well as um, the rest, right? Now, if you're doing a 10 by 3 with high rest, then I would say that's less feasible than a 3 by 10. Now, if you're doing a 10 by 3 dynamic effort style with uh, like 30 second rest intervals, then that's definitely doable. So, it depends on the lift and what's going to be most safe. Like, uh, it depends. Like, for example, rack pulls could be done 10 by 3 and 3 by 10. Both work exceptionally well. Bench press, same thing. Overhead press, same thing. So it's kind of interchangeable, but it, I would just say pay attention to the lifts that you feel are the most dangerous and uh, include the high sets, low reps approach for those. And then for standard lifts, you could do a 3 by 10 because it's simply uh, more feasible, all right? Is high volume healthier for the spine? I don't know. I would say ultimately the shearing forces is what's going to depend on your, like your spinal health. Uh, for example, when you do a rack pull, the moment arm is very small. Uh, therefore, there's a lot less stress on the lumbar spine. Whereas if you do a deadlift, even though the weight is less and you could do more volume, it poses much more risks. You know? 
I would even say that doing uh, manual labor for extended periods of time with uh, a low weight, like 50 pounds or so, uh, will pose a heavier risk on the spine because of all the twisting that's going on. And so I would say more so the shearing forces are the greatest thing you have to worry about here and not necessarily uh, the weight or the, the, like the volume or, or anything. I mean the intensity. So high volume might not be better for the spine. Like I said before, high volume deadlifts could be more disastrous than doing lower volume deadlifts, even though the weight is less. Sometimes guys get, guys get hurt using light weight. We've seen this happen time and time again. What do I recommend for lower back pain? Watch my video. Watch my free guide that I made, my uh, injury prevention playlist. I talk about all that stuff. Can you mix low and high reps in one workout, say for bench or military press? You could. And I used to train like that, but I no longer promote this uh, because of the training adaptations. It's similar to including uh, high intensity interval training with weight training uh, because it uses like similar, well, yeah, it, it tends to interfere with, with uh, your recovery, you know, and uh, it's, generally, it's generally recommended that you split them up. Like one day is dedicated to volume, another day is dedicated to uh, intensity, you know, but I know a lot of strongman competitors thrive on mixing both. In particular, if you mix the accessories with the, the, the main compounds, like some guys will do heavy compound, high rep accessory, that's fine. And if it's for bodybuilding purposes, that's also fine. But I would say that in the optimal strength training programs, you're not going to be doing a one rep max. And then right after, you're doing like uh, four sets of 25 on a compound, you know. It's typically, you're typically going to do the higher reps on the isolation, low reps on the compound. And you don't, you don't really go beyond that point. So you could do that. You could do both in the same session, but I prefer to have one day that is dedicated to exclusively volume, another day exclusively uh, intensity. Uh, high volume work on calves, usually effective, or high intensity, low volume work. I found that both work. You know, What's really going to make your calves grow is the, uh, the way to stretch you know, and, and your genetics for the most part. Uh, some guys benefit greatly from the higher intensity, others not so much, but... I would say for most people, the volume is probably a better idea. You could do uh, like two exercises of five sets of uh, 10 to 20 reps, and you focus on the, uh, the way to stretch at the bottom. Should be a great way to build your calves. Will seated rows for 15 reps build your back? Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Um, I often do reps of 15 to 20 myself. You know, that's, that's pretty much the bulk of my uh, rowing. Like on my volume days, the most common thing that I do is uh, three by 20. I'll do a 3x20 Yates row, a 3x20 dumbbell row, a 3x20 uh, machine row. I'm a big fan of uh, high rep rows, generally speaking. Uh, when you do volume training, how much weight do you use? Okay, about uh, anywhere between 55 and 75% of your one rep max. I found this to be a pretty good range for the majority of you guys. So 55 to 75, pretty good. Could be a bit lower too. It could be as low as uh, 45, I would say. But don't, don't be going lower than 45 unless it's like a, a light day or something. Okay. Fuck, I'm getting tired. Are volume days effective or necessary for novice lifters? Uh, they are not necessary. You can build just fine gains with a regular linear progression program that is rather simplistic, like my novice program, uh, but you will absolutely benefit from a volume workout if you choose to do that. Uh, lots of novices periodize their training with great success. Some use concurrent, some use linear, and some of those phases would be uh, volume. So you're, you're fine to do that if you wish. Are you going to fight? Are you going to watch the fight today? Yeah, man, that's what I'm doing tonight. I got this all prepared. Increase volume or weight for progression? Um, both. I say both, man. That's why, uh, you, first of all, when you do your volume work, the objective should be to get stronger on it. You're not just doing volume for the sake of doing volume. You're not just doing volume to get a pump. You are doing it with the specific intent of getting stronger over time. You understand? So if you do 500 pounds on a rack pull, you do a 3 by 10. I'm talking below the knee here. Well, your objective should be to do the same thing, 3 by 10, with 545. That should be the goal. So don't just think of it as, 
oh, I'm doing volume work, therefore I'm covered. No, think of it as volume work plus progressive overload. What about volume for the rotator cuff? How would you suggest to do it, the level of intensity? Yeah, for rotator cuff work, I would do uh, higher reps, low weight. I don't really go past uh, like a, a monster midi band, to be honest with you. You know, you could do the, the innies and outies, you know, external rotation over here in all directions. Pretty beneficial for that, the band pull-aparts, uh, all that stuff. I just, for rotator cuffs, I just do high reps. I'll do reps of 20, sometimes even 50. And in, in some cases, you can even do reps of 100, believe it or not. You could do reps of 100 face pulls, you know, to really focus on the rear delts and the rotator cuff area. Um, I just, I don't think you need to go heavy on that. Higher reps is just fine. Oh, okay. Is training to failure too much volume? Depends on your program, depends uh, how many exercises you're doing, how many times you're going to failure. Uh, generally speaking, I say uh, leave like a rep in the tank. And if you got to go to failure to hit that, that rep PR or whatever, then do what you got to do. You know, but it really depends on your program. But uh, I think that a lot of guys, they think that training to failure is like the devil. And it's been ridiculed way too much. And I think it's uncalled for because there are a lot of benefits of training to failure uh, for bodybuilding uh, goals. Say hi, please. My life will be complete. Hi, your dad. Do you still stand by the overhead press being the best rotator cuff rehab exercise? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Absolutely. I'm not a physical therapist, but I believe that if you do an overhead press with a light weight and you focus on the shrug at the top, it will get rid of impingement. I'm talking about the barbell version here. And it will build your mobility tremendously. I think it's the best thing you can do. You combine that uh, with some uh, band face pulls, band pull aparts, scapula wall slides, and a lot of thoracic work too. Okay? Like doing, uh, what's it called? The thoracic rows where, you're, where you do one arm at a time and you, and you twist your body to, like, to rotate the scapula and stuff. Those are tremendously beneficial as well as lat pull downs and stuff like that. But yeah, I definitely stand by the belief that doing like volume overhead press with a barbell and you shrug at the top is going to help you if you have shoulder problems. It just does. Should volume training be based on Prilipine chart? Uh, you could use it as a base for like dynamic effort, but standard volume training, I would not base it off that. And that's something that I discussed in Naturally Enhanced. But Prilipine chart is great for dynamic effort, but keep in mind it was created for Olympic weightlifters, and it has a lot of flaws if you're trying to do it in a bodybuilding way. You know? So I, I would use it for intensity days and uh, dynamic effort. Not like doing three sets of 20 and stuff like that because you'll find that the percentages are a bit off. Keep in mind, Prilipine chart was designed for uh, maximum explosiveness without reducing uh, technique because it was made for weightlifters. So don't try to take something that was made for weightlifters and apply it to a bodybuilding concept. You'll find there to be flaws, you know? Great questions, guys. I'm loving this shit. Yeah. Can you remind your viewers that this is a volume live stream, not standard Q&A questions? I mean, I did, man, but they're just asking other stuff. Yeah, guys, this is not a Q and A. It's about volume work. What's the rep tempo for volume, slow or fast? Depends on what you're trying to do. Um, I would say the most important factor again is a total workload. You know, and controlling the weight. That's really about it. Whether you're controlling it for a second or three seconds does not really matter. As long as you're using proper form and you're getting that total workload in and you're feeling the pump and you're feeling those muscles burning, to me, you're good. So you can do uh, the slower eccentrics if you choose to or the faster eccentrics. For me personally, I'm controlled, but not slow. So I'll do like a one second eccentric. And in some cases, like for, for stubborn body parts, I might slow down a little bit so I can get a better contraction and stuff. But uh, no, not really. You know, it's not, it doesn't really matter that much. Hmm. Has volume work translated into increased squat strength for you? That's kind of how I build my squat, to be honest with you. I did a lot of, uh, yeah, definitely. Like try doing the, try the 20 rep squat method. <laughs> your squat's going to blow up. 
So yeah, volume squats are very, very effective. It's also extremely brutal on the body, but it works so good that it's gonna blow your mind. So uh, for me, I found that it, it works even better than doing low reps, personally. High rep squats are incredible. Okay, is intensity only training bad for your joints and ligaments? I would say probably. It's a, it's a yin and yang, my friend. It's a yin and yang, and I believe that you need, you need some volume work in there too. You have to do some pump work. You got to do some restoration. It's not enough to just do singles and triples. If you do singles and triples year-round, I don't think it's the best thing you can do for your body. I'll just be honest with you. That's why I do a lot of volume work, you know? And although there are systems like Bulgarian Light, you know, which is uh, it's high intensity but high frequency, I mean, I think there are better systems that you could do for your recovery. You know, Bulgarian Light is very strenuous, and if you do it long enough, you're going to feel your, you might experience some joint pain, just saying. I, I don't think it's as sustainable as doing something like a, maybe a 5x10 with a lighter weight. I mean, do both. Do intensity work and volume work, but I would not recommend that you just do intensity only. Like you're talking straight intensity, like three times a week, one rep max, and not doing anything else, just low reps, low reps, low reps. I think that's a one-way ticket to Snap City, unless it's Bulgarian Light. But even with that, I don't think it's as sustainable as doing some restoration and feeling uh, the pump and all that. So do both. Uh, shortening range of motion when doing volume work. That's fine. That's fine, guys. Like if you just want to do the bottom range and not lock out because you want to feel your chest working a little bit more. For volume work, I would say that's fine. You know, but uh, do keep in mind that strength is joint angle specific. And if you're failing to do certain things like locking out, well, when you go do your one rep max, you might have trouble at the lockout because you never trained it. And for athleticism, it's not the best way to do this. But I suppose that if your goal is bodybuilding, then you can skip the lockout, just do the bottom ups. Yeah, you can do stuff like that. Or like a rear delt swing, for example. That's, that's like a partial rear delt fly. And that works pretty well. So yeah, man, you're good. Uh, pushing and pulling volume ratio for upper and lower body. Okay, my, the politically correct answer is one to one. But if you want to know what I really think about it, two to one. So for every push that you do, do uh, two back exercises on top of it. In other words, your program should have more back work than pushing work. That's how it should be. And it explains why there are so many people today who have uh, terrible development, you know, they, they, they don't have any backs. Yeah, my cat fucked up the, the floor, just saying. There's so many guys who they just do a bunch of presses. And uh, they got weak posterior chains, they got weak backs. It shouldn't be like that. Your back should be one of your best body parts if you're not on uh, drugs. It should be much better. Are 50 rep squat sets effective or excessive? It's effective uh, for GPP. But I wouldn't do it with a barbell. I would do reps of 20, personally, if you're doing the high rep stuff. Is there a minimum intensity threshold? Not sure what you mean by that. Um, like, you're talking about periodization, or in what context are you talking about here? Uh, best ways to improve work capacity so you don't overtrain. Well, you do it gradually, you know, the, the work capacity, like the GPP stuff, for example, start doing it twice a week and see how it affects your recovery and then gradually increase it from there. Like this is really something that you have to auto-regulate, you know, like for me, all of my GPP is done uh, by intuition. I don't write anything down. I don't calculate anything. I just go by my feel and I pay attention to my body. And that's really all I do for the GPP uh, portion. Should 20 rep squats be constant moving? Uh, it could be, but the original system is you work up to like a weight that 12 reps is very hard, and then you're kind of rest pausing it. And the last eight reps are like brutal. It feels like hell. Like if you go on uh, Eric Bugenhagen's uh, channel, you'll see how he did the 20 rep uh, squat program. And him, he's squatting for minutes. It takes him minutes to do 20 reps because each rep he's waiting. 
you know? So you can either go that route or you could use a lighter weight and just go straight. Both methods uh, work. Okay. Guys, I think I'm going to go on for an hour and then I'm going to stop this uh, volume uh, chat because it seems there's a lot of questions about volume, man. Like, fuck, I didn't think this video would be that long. Should I only do volume neck work or should I also use heavier weight for the neck? Up to you, man. Personally, I don't really do heavy weights on the neck. I just do higher reps. But if you want, you could do so. You could do reps of 10 if you choose to, but I, I like doing like high reps, reps of 25, 50, 100, stuff like that. Can concurrent periodization be done in the split and would it be effective? Yes, absolutely. Um, think of it like uh, Dan Green's uh, program that he released, right? Um, it's kind of like a bro split, but it's movement days. So for example, your chest day in powerlifting uh, terms would be a bench day. And then your shoulder day would be an overhead press day, right? And both days could be periodized. Your chest day could be high intensity and your shoulder day could be high volume, you see? So you could kind of crisscross it like that. You understand what I'm saying here? Or for example, the, um, the squat and deadlift. The squat day would be your leg day and then your back day would be your deadlift day. And one, one of those days could be high volume, the other day low volume. That's how you would periodize a bro split. It's an interesting uh, question you asked me, but yeah, it could be done, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's the first time I talk about that on this channel. Nice question, man. Are you ready for the big fight? Hell yeah, man. I'm gonna go to a bar soon, <clears throat> and I look forward to it. Uh, volume training on dirty bulk, that's the best time to do it. It's the best time to do it because you're going to have the best, uh, well, you'll be, you'll be very strong, you know. You'll be very strong, and when you're bulking, you have a lot of uh, strength gain, man. The only problem is going to be shortness of breath if you're not doing cardio and if you're eating uh, shit foods. But if you're bulking the correct way, it's a great time to start. Yeah, see, I'm getting the same questions, guys. Like, can I make gains just doing high reps without going heavy? Yeah, I talked about that before. Yes, you could. Like, uh, this video is going to be archived later, so you could check everything out. But yeah, you don't have to go heavy. I, I like going heavy because I have a strength uh, bias. Well, not bias, but I enjoy lifting heavy. I like doing max effort methods, singles, and triples. But if my goal was strictly size, I don't have to do it. I don't have to do uh, weights above 90% if I don't want to. It's just not necessary. But personally, I would never uh, stop doing weights in the 80 to 90% range. I just I love it too much to stop. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You could do reps with 75%. That's doable. All right, guys, we got two more minutes left, and then we're ending off this uh, volume video. By the way, I want to hear your feedback. Um, should I rename this video? Because it kind of became a volume uh, Q&A. Should I just call it volume training Q&A? <laughs> because, uh, you know... The, the Q&A portion is longer than my actual discussion on increasing volume. <laughs> so I'd love to hear your feedback regarding that. Yeah, all right, volume training Q&A. Okay, I'll do it. Let me change it now. Okay, let's answer some more questions here. I do 10 sets of three, eight by three and five by five on squats and deadlifts on volume day. Is this a reasonable approach? Yeah, that's great. But I'm a bit confused as to what you're doing in the setup because squat and deadlift, that's two exercises, but you have uh, three rep ranges here. So I'm confused how you're programming it, but those are fine to do. <laughs> Can high volume give you strength? Yes. I talked about this before, guys. Check out the archive. You'll see.
Okay, same questions. I, th I think I've answered most of the stuff here. Okay, how do you get bigger muscle volume around your elbow? You're talking about the medial head of your triceps? Okay, it comes down to doing uh, extensions, high volume extensions. I'm going to recommend a couple things. Barbell and double extensions, rolling included, uh, close grip bench for high volume, board press for high volume, and uh, band pressing for high volume. And then try doing a lot of uh, band pushdowns as well to work on the connective tissue around your elbow and prevent uh, joint pain. That will allow you to do the extensions safely. Uh, why does super high volume help build connective tissue? Yeah, check out uh, John Quint, Neuromuscular um, Therapy. Yeah. And basically it has to do with, um, well, you can look it up. Check it out. Check out his video. You know what? I'm going I'm to link it right here. It's about reform, you know. I'm going to put it right here in this uh, chat. Just give me two seconds, okay? He really explains the science well. Ooh, there you go. Okay, guys. I want all of you to watch this video regarding uh, John Quint. and uh, He's the ART guy at Westside, and he made an ex excellent explanation, you know. It's uh, really probably the best chat you're going to find. You know, basically, uh, you'll, you'll see. You're, you'll like that. Okay. Any other questions? We're pretty much out of time here regarding uh, volume training, guys. Yeah, I'm getting the same questions, guys. <laughs> I see the same, like five of the same questions from before. Mm -hmm. No, looks like we're out of questions here. I've answered this already. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll answer one more. Is 50 reps a set too light? Uh, that depends on the exercise. Uh, some lifts, like barbell back squats, I would not do reps of 50 unless it's for GPP. Other lifts, like the tricep push down, I regularly do like reps of 50 all the time. You know, so it depends on what you're doing. Even the rear delt fly, rear delt flies could be done for reps of 50. I'm serious. It burns like hell. It burns those rear delts, but it could be done. So it depends. Standing cable crunches that could be done for reps of 50. Reverse hypers that could be done for reps of 50. A bench press. Are you going to do reps of 50 on a bench press? Probably not. You're probably not going to go above 30, you know. So it depends on the lift. I would say the heavier it is, the more of a compound it is, you're not going to be able to pull that off. Whereas if it's for a GPP or it's a light day or, or an accessory lift like a push down, it is uh, quite doable. So there you go. This is the, uh, the volume Q&A. I hope you guys enjoy this particular segment. Tomorrow there will be another live video. I have lots of topics in store for you. It's probably going to be uh, mid-afternoon or so. It'll probably be around uh, 1 to 3 p.m. EST, right, Eastern Time. So stay tuned for that, and I'll be doing more stuff like this. It's basically going to be it's me talking to the camera, and then I answer your questions after, the same way we just did it now. Kind of like a Q&A format, but it's for the topic. So today was about volume training, so I answered your questions about volume. If tomorrow I decide to talk about calisthenics, for instance, then, then the questions are going to be about calisthenics. I don't want to hear your questions about uh, work or other stuff like that, all right? Okay, guys, so peace out. Thanks for being here. Appreciate your support, and uh, look forward to that, that fight, man, that fucking fight. So I'm going out now, and uh, yeah, I will talk to you all demain. Ciao, ciao.